Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Gabriel Levi, and today I'm gonna to show you how to automate your preset changes on the Fractal Audio FM9, Axe FX3, or FM3. For this example, I'm gonna be using Ableton Live, but if you use Logic, like I also do, go ahead and check out my other video on how to do it inside of Logic. The only other piece of equipment you're going to need besides the FM9 and your DAW is a USB-B cable. This is by far the easiest way to hook up to your computer for things like using FM9 edit or sending patch changes over USB. You can also use the MIDI in port on the FM9 and one of the MIDI out ports on your interface if it has one, or you can use a dedicated MIDI interface. Something like the Mio XM is a really good option for this. I typically go inside of the global settings and change the display offset to zero because it matches up really well with Logic. Ableton's a little bit different. There is gonna be an offset of one when we're inputting the presets we're trying to call up. Same with scenes, so we'll check that out when we get there. So the first thing that you wanna do when you open up Ableton is go into the preferences and we wanna come down to these MIDI ports here. Make sure FM9 or XFX3 is selected um, and just as long as track is selected, we're good to go. So now that we've selected the FM9 in the preferences window, we have to come to arrangement view and create a new MIDI track. So I've already got one created here, but we can come up to create, insert MIDI track, and that will make a new one for us. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Next step is to make sure that we select the FM9 here at the output because we're sending MIDI from Ableton to the FM9. And depending on how many devices you have on stage, you may need to change the channel that these messages are being sent on. So now that we have the MIDI track sending out to the FM9, we have to create an empty MIDI clip. So I just selected some empty space and then insert empty MIDI clips. Once you click on the clip, it's gonna open up this clip view right here and we need to come down here to where it says launch and it may be closed so just make sure to open that up and then where it says PGM that's for program change that's where we actually set the preset we're trying to call up so if I were to change this to 15 we should see that reflected on the unit nice and if you can read what's on the screen, it actually says 14. That's because preset one on the FM9 at the moment actually displays as preset zero. So there is an offset of one. You can change that on the unit itself. You can change the display offset to be set to one so that it will line up with Ableton. It's, it's really up to you how you want to set it. Just remember there is going to be an offset of one. So if you want preset 14, you're actually going to have to change this to preset 15. So to demonstrate, I'm going going to have this cycle through four different presets. I'm gonna set the first clip to preset number one. And here's what's really cool. You don't have to do all of these steps again. You can actually just take this MIDI clip and duplicate it. So I'm just holding option and dragging it over and that creates um, a duplicate. Now inside of here, we can come and change this program to program two. I'm gonna repeat this two more times. Come down here to program, change it to three. Okay, and then change this one to four. Now, <laughs> fingers crossed, this should go from preset zero up to preset three. Let's take a look. Zero, one, two, and three. All right, so we've successfully sent program changes to the FM9, but what if we want to send scene changes? Scene changes are sent using CC values and they're being sent over channel 34. That's just what the Fractal units default to, at least that's what the Axe FX2 defaulted to. And so I just always stuck with it, but you can set that to pretty much whatever channel you want. So first thing we have to do is change the channel that the CC values are being sent over and that's right here in this envelopes pane. So we're gonna open this up and it defaults to pitch bend, but we're gonna come down to 34. Now here in this clip view is where we set the scene number. So again, we do have an offset of one here. So the value of zero actually calls up scene number one. So I'm gonna leave this set to zero. So that's gonna call up scene number one in this first clip. Over here, I'm gonna set this to scene, or I'm gonna set it to a value of one, which is gonna call up scene number two. Now I'm gonna come over to this clip, do the same thing, but set it to two, which is going to give us scene number three. And then we're gonna move this up to three, which will give us scene four. Fingers crossed, if I hit play, we should see the FM9 switching from scene one to scene two, 
Scene three and four, here we go. Scene one, clean. Scene two, crunch. Scene three, and scene four. You might have also seen it switching presets. That's because I did not change the program change value here on each clip. But just make sure you do that if you're trying to stay on the same preset. But here's one really important part that I have seen skipped over in other videos. So I wanna make sure that I highlight this. What happens if you need to access preset, let's say 128? Well, let's see, I'm gonna put in 128 on this first clip right here. 128. If I hit play, let's see what preset we end up on. 127. Okay, what if I change this to one, uh... Oh, it can't even go any higher than that. So one important thing to remember is that presets are stored in banks. Each bank contains a total of 128 presets. For this entire video, we've been working inside of bank number one. But if we need to access those higher preset numbers, we need to get into the next bank up. And it's really simple. We just come down here to where it says launch and change this bank value from one to two. And now we should see that this first preset is going to give us, I'm gonna put this back down to preset number one, just so we're starting at preset one inside of bank two. This should give us preset 128. Perfect. So now we are in bank two, preset one, which is actually preset 128. Let's say we wanna go quite a bit higher. So I'm just gonna pull this up, hit play. Now we're in bank number two, preset 116, which actually comes out to preset 243. This part was a little confusing for me at first, so if you need to watch this a couple times, make sure to go ahead and do that. But I'm gonna hopefully show by example how this is gonna work. So in this first clip, we're going to be in bank number one, preset number one, which should show up on the fractal as preset zero. Now we're gonna look at this next clip and I'm gonna go up to the next bank. So we're gonna go to bank two, preset number one. Now remember bank one has a maximum of 128 presets, but since we have a value of zero, that's why you only see it go to 127 because we still have that value of zero. So again, this next clip, I've set it to bank two, program number one, which is preset one in bank two, which should give us preset 128. Now I'm gonna come over here to this third clip and set it to preset or set it to bank three and also leave it at program change number one. So basically what I'm doing is cycling through each bank. So when I hit play, we should see it start at preset zero, which is preset one in bank one. The next clip is gonna bring me to bank number two, preset one, which is 128, and then bank three, preset one, which should be like 255 or something like that. Fingers crossed, here we go. Okay, zero. Now we're in bank two, preset one, and now we're in bank three, preset one, which is 256. If all of your presets exist within the zero to 127 range, none of this stuff really matters, but I still think it's important to know in case you wanna access those higher presets. Well, that pretty much wraps this video up. Please let me know if you guys have any suggestions for future videos on this channel. There's a lot that I wanna do, but I also wanna know what you guys want to know. So um, yeah, until the next one, peace.